Hello and welcome to this course on stylization. I'm Kenny, a freelance character designer and illustrator, working mainly in children's television production and publishing. As a character designer, I'm often required to work in different styles depending on the nature of a particular project. Some projects may be aimed at preschoolers while others are for older kids. Some might even be for 2D while others are for 3D. These different variables often influence the style I have to design in. Together we're going to explore what style is, what it means to apply style to a design, and then choose a single character to design in two very different styles. We will follow a basic design process, comparing the developing characters as we go. Starting with rough sketches, we'll explore key design principles such as proportion, silhouette and the use of shape while making design choices suitable for each character style. We'll then progress the successful ideas from these into some refined concepts, iterating our characters down into a single clear idea. Finally, we will progress these ideas into a finished concept piece for each style. For this tutorial, I have chosen the character of Frankenstein's monster. I'll just call him Frankenstein from now on. Hopefully most of you will be familiar with who Frankenstein is, uh, and I'm going to be drawing heavily on the classic Frankenstein aesthetic, inspired by Boris Karloff's portrayal of him in the 1931 film Frankenstein, as this version of Frankenstein's monster has become a classic in popular culture. I wanted a character concept that was well known and already established, so I could focus purely on the stylization side of design. I don't intend to reinvent the wheel or do a completely original take with this character here, my goal is simply just to design Frankenstein into very different styles and see how I personally go about it. If you're drawing along with this tutorial, at the end of every section there will be a task for you to do. These tasks will relate to the videos and guide you through the design process while helping you understand and implement the ideas discussed. Okay, so for this tutorial, you will need something to draw on and something to draw with. I'll be working digitally in Photoshop and using a Cintiq 22. However, you can use anything you want, a pencil and paper, an iPad and Procreate, or any other drawing program that you're comfortable with. There may be some tools or brushes I use here which are specific to my own setup in Photoshop, but the overall design process and application of style is not dependent on particular software or hardware. Brushes wise, I don't use anything particularly fancy and all my brushes are available or easily created within Photoshop. Let's quickly go over what I use and what for. Hard round brush. So this is a standard Photoshop brush which I use mainly for doing line art but also for blocking in colour. The soft round brush is another default Photoshop brush which I use sparingly for creating soft lighting effects or smoothing out transitions of tone and colour. Chunky charcoal. So I've used this brush for years, it has a really nice grainy texture to it which I love. Uh, it's a Kyle T Webster brush and it should still be available within Photoshop. I tend to use it with opacity and size pressure on and use it for the bulk of my digital painting process. Chunky charcoal flat is just the same chunky charcoal brush from before but I've basically flattened it within the brush settings to get more of a thick and thin feel to it. I like to use this flattened version of the brush for my sketching process. Pastel Medium Tip is another default Photoshop brush which I use mainly for colour blocking but it's also handy for adding a bit of texture to backgrounds. Ink is just a default hard round brush which again I've flattened. I use this in my sketches sometimes to add darker or thick to thin lines to quickly suggest form and shadows within my line work. So that's it. I'm not using anything fancy here. I like to keep my brush use simple and uncomplicated so I can just purely focus on design. Okay, before we get started, I want to give you your first assignment and that's to choose a character to draw in two very different styles. Feel free to choose Frankenstein or maybe another established famous character 
such as Dracula, maybe Sherlock Holmes. Alternatively, you could always use a character of your own, but try and choose something with an established story so we can focus purely on stylization moving forward. When it comes to illustration and character design, what do we mean by style? Put simply, I consider style to be a consistent set of design choices within a character or a piece of work. These choices may be conscious and planned out carefully, determined by an art director or someone similar, and also by the needs and limitations of a project. I'll talk a bit more about this later. Or these choices could be unconscious, in the sense that different artists draw in their own way, not necessarily making design decisions as they draw, per se, but drawing within their own particular drawing habits. I would equate these drawing habits to design choices, whether they are developed over time on purpose or by accident. Design choices may relate to how angular a character is, or soft and rounded they are, or maybe how simplified or complex they might be. Uh, it could relate to how pushed the proportions are, or if the character's design defies the normal laws of anatomy. Let's look at an example. Here I've drawn the same character in two very different styles. The one on the left is quite simple, almost graphic and flat in style, without much feeling of volume. It feels a bit silly and quirky, and it wouldn't really be out of place in a comical 2D animation. It's full of hard angles and geometry, with anatomy being suggested with simple clear shapes. It uses outlines to describe the forms, and the texture on this kilt is flat and very simplified. The version on the right is much more complex, with more realistic anatomy, though still with an element of simplification. The forms and rendering are more realistic too, though again simplified, and there are no outlines at all, so it feels like a character designed for a 3D animated film or game. It gives off a more serious vibe, though that said there's still something a bit quirky and unthreatening about him. The design choices going on in each of these characters are consistent within them, but these two styles wouldn't fit together in the same film or project. They each feel like they have a particular story or medium where they would work most effectively. Now if we imagine applying different design choices to one part of each character, we can see why consistency is an important element of style. This is an extreme example, but it now isn't clear what the intended style was for each character, or where each character belongs. It's confusing and bad design. Ultimately, I see stylization as a form of abstraction of reality. So abstraction is just a process of reimagining the natural world in an expressive way. In other words, making design decisions about how to represent the natural world which says something unique or expresses something different to that reality. Let's look at an example. So here I've represented an apple in various ways. They all say apple, but they all have very different styles and they all convey something a bit different. So we can go super abstract or super realistic and also create variables in between. We can use lines or no lines. We can make it super simplistic or render the forms with light and color. The list of things we can play with is endless and the variability of style comes from playing with all these ideas and more. How we choose to represent this apple is what forms its style. Of course, we can apply these same ideas to characters too. Again, the choices we make in how to abstract and represent reality, in this case, a girl with a phone, ultimately determines the style of the character. It should also be noted that realism itself, for example, representing reality exactly as it is, could also be a style as well. When it comes to designing characters for our particular purpose, Style is never an arbitrary choice. The style of a character must be fit for purpose. So I refer to this purpose as the context of a design. A character's style must be context specific. Um, and so the context includes such things as the medium. So what is a character being designed for? Is it a 2D puppet animation? 
a next generation 3D console game, or maybe even a children's book. Each medium has its own technical restraints regarding what is able to be achieved both budget-wise and medium-wise. Take for example a low-budget TV show. It probably won't have the budget to invest in high-end feature quality 3D character rigs. Or how about a mobile phone game? It won't be able to compete with the latest gaming consoles in terms of computing power and so it'll limit what is achievable stylistically. The target audience of a character will also affect the desired style. As a general rule of thumb, I would say the younger the audience, the more simplified, colourful and playful the character design should be. The older an audience, the more realism and darker design choices can be used. The desired tone. So, does this character exist in a silly, whimsical world, or is it a serious and gritty one? Are they in a comedy show or an action-adventure movie? The desired tone will affect the chosen style. So a silly goofy character design will be out of place in a gritty melodrama, for example. Finally, story. So when I talk about story here, what I'm referring to is the world of the character. So is it fantasy, reality, past, present or future? But also who the character is and what role they play within this world. So are they young, old? What's their cultural background, their character type or even their occupation? Story also includes their goals and desires, and the events that happen to them, and of course, their personality. Story will determine the medium, the tone, the target audience, and ultimately, the right style to design in. Let's now look at a couple of simple examples to help convey these ideas. I designed this character with a preschool audience in mind for an imaginary 2D animated TV show. The character's personality is friendly and upbeat. So all the design choices which make up the style of this character align with the character's context and were made consciously. The shapes used are soft, round and unthreatening, perfect for the character's intended young audience. Um, the proportions also help here with the big eyes and the big head being childlike and endearing. The colours are bright and happy and the design is simple, allowing it to be easily animated. Furthermore, the character's pose and expression reinforces their personality. This character was designed with an older audience in mind, for an imaginary 3D console game. This character is antagonistic and likely an enemy in the game, so we can immediately see the difference in style between this and the previous character. The triangular shapes and more angular design choices are more suited to a character for an older audience and also help to convey their nature and status in the game. They were designed for a 3D medium, so the final style is less flat with more rendered forms and lighting. The character's pose and expression also help convey their antagonistic personality. Hopefully the point I'm trying to make here is clear. The design choices used for each of these characters are grounded in their context, and these informed design choices ultimately define their style. As a character designer, it's important to know the design limitations of a particular project before designing. This is where a style guide comes in useful. So what's a style guide? It's basically the design rules which are established in the beginning of a project, taking into account the context and the story. It could come in the form of written notes or a fully fledged document outlining the design do's and don'ts with visual examples. Any characters within that project will need to fit within those stylistic boundaries. Let's go back to my first character example from before and think about what key design rules might have influenced its design. Rounded, simple shapes, childlike proportions, simple, vibrant colours, a flat, graphic approach, and bold, black outlines. Bear in mind, there's more going on in this style than just these simple design rules, and working within these limitations still leaves room for lots of interpretation and subjectivity. The key thing to take away is that these ideas pretty much sum up the style of this particular character and could be used to retroactively build a style guide for them. They would make a good starting point for steering a design in the right direction for this particular context. So with all this in mind, let's move on and create some simple style guides that I can use for my two Frankenstein characters. For my first style, I want to create a set of design rules fitting for a fun 2D animated TV show. 
It should be aimed at kids, but not preschoolers. So I'm thinking of around ages 5 to 9. I want this version of Frankenstein to take some personality cues from popular culture, so it should be kind of lumbering and childlike, but then I also want to add some comical and silly vibes into there. Uh, I'm imagining him as a bit of a slapstick character. I'm also imagining this character will need to be simple enough to animate with lower TV animation budgets. So most modern TV animation is made with 2D character puppets, so I'm going to design with that roughly in mind. My main style reference points would be shows like Gravity Falls, Spongebob Squarepants and even The Simpsons. It's important to clarify here, I don't mean to design in these styles, but they've got a similar vibe to what I want to achieve with this character based on his imagined purpose. With all this established, I can now start to think about what design choices would be appropriate for this character style. I want to aim for high stylization and move away from 100% accurate anatomy. This isn't to say I want to ignore anatomy altogether, but we can ignore anatomical details and keep the arms and legs like simple tubes for example. I want to bring in a bit of a graphic feel to this style, with strong silhouettes and clear use of shape. The shapes of this character can be a bit angular, but combined with plenty of curves so as not to be threatening. This character, though he's a monster, is not really meant to scare children. I want to push the proportions with this style, they don't need to conform to normal human proportions, so they can be fun and exaggerated to help with that comical tone. I also want this character to have outlines and flat colours. This will work well for a 2D animation and will help convey the tone that I'm going for. So as I start to design this version of Frankenstein, I'm going to keep all these points in mind to help guide my design choices. For my second style, I'm aiming for a set of design rules fitting for a 3D animated feature film. For this version of Frankenstein, I want to base his personality more on Mary Shelley's original depiction of him, so more sensitive, emotional and a bit misunderstood. This character will still be suitable for kids, but should accommodate an older audience too. I want to have a bit of a comedic tone for this style, However, the focus will be on the drama and the action. Essentially more serious than the previous style, but not too serious. The style should reflect the fact that the character will be for 3D animation, with the capacity for complex and nuanced character animation, especially in the face and the hands. Style-wise, I'm thinking along the complexity and stylization of How to Train Your Dragon and Zootopia. Again, I don't want to copy these styles but they're a good reference point in terms of complexity and tone. With all this in mind, I can now start to think about what design choices would be appropriate for this version of Frankenstein. Medium stylization. I want some complexity in the designs, but still some cool stylization. So I'll need to find that balance between realism and simplification. I still want to aim for a clean and clear design. It shouldn't be super abstract, but playing with and pushing shapes is okay. And I want the shapes to convey an idea of this version of Frankenstein being large and powerful, potentially threatening, but with that vulnerability as well. I want to push the proportions, but not to the extreme. This style should feel like it's not the real world, but retain an element of being believable. The anatomy can be more realistic than the previous style, but it should be exaggerated and simplified to an extent. Again, I'll keep this style guide in mind as I start to design my second version of Frankenstein. Alright, task 2. So, taking your character idea from task 1, I want you to come up with two very different styles to draw them in. So try to think about what context they might fit, if they're being designed for say 2D or 3D, maybe a TV show, or something else entirely. And choose styles and some basic design rules which fit each context. 